Welcome to Hero Pack Talk of Champions. I'm JP from Not Lights Over Arkham, and this time we are actually doing an unboxing for the Wasp Hero Pack. So let's get started. So I just got the Wasp Hero Pack, and let's start looking at the cards. Okay, so uh, first we have, of course, Wasp Hero card. Uh, Wasp Hero side is uh, one toward, one attack, two defense. Avenger Tiny, small, uh, small but mighty, responds after Wasp or an event you play, defeats a minion or side scheme, deal one damage to the villain. And Wasp has hand size of five and 11 hit points. Uh, let's look at the Alter Ego side next. So Nadia Van Dyne has a recovery of 3, genius, a girl action, shuffle up to 2 cards with the printed mental resource from your discard pile into your deck, limit once per round, and hand size of 6. Then let's look at the a giant version, if I just can get this thing to open. Okay, so Wasp uh, Giant version is 2 Dwarf, 2 Attack and 3 Defense. And uh, the Dwarf and Attack has asterisks on them, so let's look at those a bit. Uh, Wasp Giant version has the Avenger and Giant uh, traits. So, threat. Uh, uh, the asterisk for the Dwarf is threat you remove using your basic Dwarf power can be divided among schemes as you choose. Okay, so you can uh, Dwarf from multiple schemes at one time. That could be really useful if you only have one uh, threat on a side scheme, for example, that you really need to get rid of and want to Dwarf also the main scheme. Uh, the damage is... Um, basically the same, so damage you deal using your basic attack power can be divided among enemies as you choose. Okay. So, um, I am really interested in the Wasp Hero powers, but uh, let's put that uh, aside for now. Okay, so uh, I zoomed in a bit so you can better see the cards, so uh, first hero set card is Ant-Man, uh, Scott Lang. Uh, it's a 4 cost ally with 2 dwarf and 2 attack. Avenger traded with 3 hit points. While you are in giant hero form, Ant-Man gains the giant trait and gets plus 1 attack. While you are in tiny hero form, Ant-Man gains the tiny trait and gets plus 1 dwarf. And Ant-Man can be committed as a wild resource. Okay, well... Uh, depending on which uh, hero mode you are in, uh, Ant-Man gets a boost either to his uh, dwarf or his attack. So that is okay, I think. Next we have Giant Help. So Giant Help is a two-cost event. Uh, dwarf, hero action dwarf, remove three threat from a scheme. Uh, remove a total of 4 threat divided among schemes as you choose instead if you are in giant hero form. And giant help can be committed as a mental resource. Okay, I think this is a uh, okay, uh, actually a pretty good work card. And there are two copies of giant help in the deck. And uh, next we have Pinpoint Strike. Pinpoint Strike is a 3 cost event. Attack, hero action attack, deals 7 damage to an enemy. If you are in tiny hero form, this attack deals 1 additional damage to an enemy and gains overkill. And it can be committed as a mental resource. Okay, I think this is uh, quite the staple hero, uh, hero attack. Event uh, 3 costed and uh, can deal 8 damage if you meet the criteria. 
so I think it's a decent card. And there are uh, three copies of Pinpoint Strike in the deck. Next we have Rapid Growth. It's a one cost event. Uh, it has the giant and super power traits, hero interrupt. When you use one of your hero basic powers, fourth attack or def uh, defense, change your to your, uh, change to your giant hero form and get plus two to that power for this use. And rapid growth can be committed as an uh, energy resource. Well, this is uh, quite interesting. You can basically, uh, in from tiny form, uh, change your form to giant and get a decent buff to the stat you are using and remember in giant form you can divide the damage or thwart uh, amongst different enemies or schemes so getting a plus two to that is really powerful and there are two rapid growths in the deck next we have wasp sting uh, Wasp Sting is a two cost event. It has attack trait, hero action attack. If you are in giant hero form, deal a total of four damage divided amongst enemies as you choose. Uh, hero action attack. If you are in tiny form, deal five damage to an enemy. Okay, so in uh, giant form, you can divide four damage amongst uh, different enemies. And in tiny form you pinpoint to the damage to one one enemy and deal one more damage. Oh yeah, and uh, Wasp Sting can be committed as a mental resource. Uh, I'm noticing that uh, Wasp has a lot of mental resource cards, it seems. Uh, Wasp ha Sting, there's two copies of Wasp Sting in the deck. Then we have uh, Pin Particles. And it's basically the same as with Ant-Man. So Pin Particles is a resource card. Hero response after you spend this card, heal two damage from your hero if you are in giant hero form, or draw one card if you are in tiny hero form. So just the same as uh, with Ant-Man's Pin Particles, and there are two copies of Pin Particles in the deck. Next we have uh, Red Room Training. It's a uh, two cost upgrade. Uh, it has the skill trait. Uh, while you are in giant hero form, you gain retaliate one. While you are in tiny hero form, you, your basic attack gains piercing. Discard any tough status card from the target before dealing damage. And uh, red room can be committed as a, as a physical resource. And there is only one copy in the deck. Next we have uh, Biosynthetic Wings, uh, it's a 2 cost upgrade, item attack traded, Wasp gains the aerial trait, interrupt when you would take any amount of damage if you are in tiny hero form, exhaust Biosynthetic Wings, prevent one of that damage, and Biosynthetic Wings can be discarded, uh, can be committed as a uh, energy resource. And there is one copy in the deck. Next we have uh, the last card in the Wasp uh, set. It's the Wasp's Helmet. It's a two cost upgrade. It has the armor and tech traits. While you are in giant hero form, you get plus one ward. While you are in tiny hero form, you can get plus one attack. And Wasp's helmet can be used as a physical resource. Okay, well, that looks quite quite okay as a card. Nothing really flashy, but will boost your ward uh, or attack depending on which form you are in. Okay, so that was all of the Wasp hero pack, uh, Wasp specific cards, and uh, Wasp comes with the aggression aspect 
so I'm just uh, flipping through so let's look at the rebuild deck and the aggression cards next so first card which is a new card is Thor uh, Jane Foster uh, Thor is a 4 cost ally with 1 thwart and 2 attack uh, Thor has the Asgard and Avenger traits and 4 hit points. Response After you play Thor from your hand, deal 2 damage to the villain, 3 damage instead if you paid for this card using a uh, physical resource. And Thor can be committed as an energy resource. Um, I think this isn't that. that powerful of an ally. It's an okay ally. Uh, the 4 cost is, I think, a bit steep and, uh, well, Thor has 4 health, so you can swing with uh, Thor 4 times before he gets defeated, but the response power is not that great. I, I think dealing 2 damage to the villain or 3 damage is not that important, because uh, if you are dealing damage to a to the villain, uh, you are. You can do it with other cards better. But yeah, it's an okay card, nothing special, but yeah, let's move on. Next, we have uh, Wasp, uh, Jane Van Dyne, uh, Janet Van Dyne, actually. So, uh, Wasp uh, ally is a zero cost ally. Uh, it, uh, Wasp has one thwart and three attack and zero hit points. Aerial Avenger traits. Wasp gets plus one hit point for each pin counter on her. Interrupt. When Wasp enters play, place one pin counter on her to a maximum of three for each uh, energy resource you overpaid for Wasp's cost. So, unlike the Hank Pym version of Ant-Man uh, ally, uh, this wasp needs to uh, be pay paid with energy resources, so I think this is much weaker than the uh, Ant-Man ally version, because you have to have the energy resources to pay, pay for this card. But uh, saying that, if you build your deck around having a lot of energy resources, then you can overpay up to 3 and Wasp hits for 3, so it's quite quite hard hitting ally with cheap, cheap cost. But let's move on. Next we have Into the Fray. It's a 3 cost event. And uh, it has the attack trait. Hero action, attack, deal 6 damage to a minion, for each point of excess damage dealt by this attack, remove one threat from the main scheme, and it can be used as an energy resource. So I think this is a really good card to have, instead of some of the weaker uh, dwarf removal cards for aggression, uh, you could just nuke an weak minion with this and remove like 5 threat if you have softened the minion up a bit first so it can be used to remove a lot of threat but of course the cost of 3 is a bit uh, high but let's see I'm, I'm definitely going to try this out in my aggression decks and there are 3 copies of course in the deck next we have Surprise attack. It's a one cost event with attack trait. Uh, hero response attack. After you char, uh, after change form, deal three damage to an enemy. Four damage instead if you paid for this card using the uh, physical resource, and it can be committed as a physical resource. So uh, this is in the series of if you change your form cards like. Uh, Ant-Man had some uh, like Moxie and uh, laid out the law for uh, 
leadership and justice aspects. So this is the same series but in aggression and I think this is uh, quite okay for one cost I think flipping from alter ego to hero form for example paying one and this card and you can basically with the right resource remove a hydra soldier which are annoying to get rid of or something like that so I think this is an okay card and I will be trying it out and there are of course three copies in the deck and uh, the pre-built deck comes with two power of aggressions not gonna spend that much time on those and then we have boot camp it's a three cost support it's a location play under any player's control max one player player each ally you control gets plus one attack and it can be used as a mental resource. So this is basically the aggression version of the team training that came in, uh, was it in Hawkeye, that you get plus one uh, health for your allies, but this gives your allies plus one attack, so you can really beef up your allies and hit hard them and there are three copies of this in the deck but you can only play one of them for each player then we have lion weight it's a one cost upgrade uh, it's a preparation uh, first preparation outside of uh, black widow which is really nice because I have been waiting for more preparation cars to try out in uh, Black Widow. So line weight is a max one per player, hero response, attack. After a minion engages you, discard line weight, deal three damage to that minion. So that is quite okay if in a minion heavy uh, scenario. And there are of course three copies in the deck. So that is all of the new aggression cards. And next, look, let's look at the neutral or the basic cards that come in uh, Wasp. First, we have Iron Heart. Iron Heart uh, Riri Williams is a two cost ally. It has one ward and one attack. It's champion traded and two hit points. Uh, Response after you play Iron Heart from your hand, draw one card. So basically, it uh, costs one because it repla uh, replaces one of the cards spent to play uh, Iron Heart. So uh, I think it's okay. It has it can be committed as a mental resource. Then we have another Spider-Man ally. So this is Spider-Man Miles Morales. It's a 3 cost ally with 1 ward and 2 attack. Uh, Spider Man Miles Morales has the champion trait and 3 hit points response. After you play Spider Man from your hand, choose ward or attack. Spider Man gets plus 2 to the chosen power until the end of the phase. So, on the turn when Spider Man Miles Morales comes into play, you can boost his ward or attack. Then, uh, Hit with or twerk with him three times if you can ready him up. So uh, he is champion traded, so uh, Earth's Mightiest Heroes doesn't work, but get ready from uh, leadership does. So that isn't worth mentioning. And I think it's a decent ally. Next we have the same basic event as in Ant-Man, Swarm Tactics. It's a one cost event, tactic, team up, Ant-Man and Wasp, uh, max one per deck. Hero action changed to your other hero form, ready your hero. So not gonna spend much time for that. Then we have the three basic resources. Nothing much to say about those. Then we have an interesting card. Uh, we have a new uh, resource card for basic. It's the power in all of us. 
It's a resource, max 2 per deck. Double the number of resources this card generates when playing, uh, when paying for a basic grey card. And it can be committed as a uh, wild resource. And there are of course two copies. But I think this opens up a lot of interesting deck building ideas, for me at least. Then uh, this is a card I'm really excited to see. It's another copy of Queen Carrier, so now I <laughs> don't every time have to fish my Queen Carrier from a previous deck I built. So that's really good. And that is the end of the player cards for the Wasp uh, pre-built deck. So then let's look at the uh, obligation. The obligation is Red Dreams. Uh, give to the Nadia Van Dyne player. You may flip to alter ego form, choose, exhaust Nadia Van Dyne, remove red dreams from the game, or discard each card with the printed mental resource from your hand and take one damage discard this obligation. So as we saw, there are a lot of mental resource cards in Wasp's uh, own set. So this could really hurt if you have to, if you just can't flip to Alter Ego and you have to stay in a hero form and you could lose a lot of cards from your hand. Next we have uh, Mother's Orders. Uh, Mother's Orders is a side scheme as an additional cost for each hero to make a basic attack, the hero must spend one of any resource and it comes in play with two threats per player and it has three boost icons. So uh, I think this is a card you really want to get rid of as fast as possible and nothing more to say about that. Uh, if you are playing uh, Wasp as a Justice was removing all its ward and not attacking that much, then maybe maybe not get rid of this, but uh, this all also affects each other hero, so, so I think this needs to be get rid of. Then the Nemesis minion is Beetle. Uh, Beetle is a minion with one scheme and one attack and four hit points. Uh, Beetle has the great criminal uh, and Guard, so really need to get rid of this enemy. Uh, forced interrupt when Beetle is defeated, choose to either spend a physical resource or shuffle Beetle into the encounter deck. So, even if you defeat Beetle, if you don't have a, a physical resource in hand to discard, Beetle just goes back into the encounter deck and can come back swiftly. So you need to plan ahead when you're defeating him, uh, defeating her, I think. Yeah, okay, let's move on. So, then we have uh, Beetle's, uh, Beetle Mark, Beetle Armor Mark 4, and it's a uh, armor tech uh, attachment. Attach to Beetle if able, if you cannot attach to the villain, attach character gets plus 4 hit points. And it has two boost icons. Oh yeah, Beetle also had two boost icons, I forgot to mention that. So, uh, even if Beetle is not in play, this card doesn't just whiff, it goes to the villain. So, uh, as you can note, there is no way to get rid of this card, other than defeating the enemy that it's attached to. So, there's that. Uh, and then we have Beetle Mania, and there are two copies of this in the deck. So it's a treachery. When revealed Alter Ego, this card gains Surge. When revealed Hero, Beetle attacks you plus one with plus one attack. If no attack was made this way, this card gains Surge. Okay, well it's uh, and it's uh, it has one 
boost icon. Okay, well, that is all of Wasp's deck. I think I can put this here for a moment. If it shows. There's a bit of glare, sorry about that, but hopefully you can read that. And lastly, let's look at all of the other aspect cards that come in the Wasp pack. So first we have uh, Running Interference. Uh, running Interference is a two-cons event. It has the four trait. Play only if your identity has the Avenger trait. Hero action forward, remove two threat from uh, the main scheme, remove X additional threat from the main scheme uh, to a maximum of three, where X is the equal to the villain stage number. So this is um, in the same series as Master Courage, for example, that it uh, is more powerful depending on the villain's uh, stage number so for example in stage 2 this would remove 4 threats and in stage 3 5 from the main scheme so I think it's a really good card but uh, maybe more even better if you're playing uh, expert or heroic then we have all for one and it's a two cost event for leadership it's an attack hero action attack so i think it's the first uh, attack uh, event for leadership deal three damage to an enemy and exhaust any number of adventure characters you control deal one additional damage to that enemy for each character exhausted this way so I think this works really well in the archetype of leadership where you have a lot of allies in play but you're not uh, attacking or thwarting with them but exhausting them uh, to be full uh, for other cards for example this one or strength in numbers or something like that so I think it's a decent card then we have the protection card perseverance it uh, is a uh, one cost event with the tactic trait hero response after you change from uh, after you change form give your hero a tough status card okay well i think this is a really good card yeah I, i'm certain uh, i think this is a good protection card if you're playing protection build that wants to change between uh, forms a lot so Ant-Man protection or Wasp protection I don't think this is that great in other protection uh, builds because you usually build your at least I build my protection deck to stay in hero form as long as possible so I'm rarely changing from uh, alter ego to hero or vice versa so I think this is really good for a Wasp or Ant-Man protection. We'll be trying it out in the, these heroes. And lastly, we have uh, uh, Athletic Conditioning. So this is a one-cost event. Uh, it's a basic card and a hero action. Discard one stun or confused status card from your hero. And it can be committed as a mental resource. Well, I, I think this is not that great. It costs you one resource and the card in, from your hand, and it only removes Confuse or Stun. And it's a hero action, so you can't even play it in Alter Ego. And uh, uh, there is so few situations in which this could, would be better than to just uh, exhaust your hero to remove the status card so I think this is not that good but yeah I think of course I'll try it out in one build or another but yeah uh, that is the wasp hero deck hope you like this lengthy first look 
uh, I will be trying out the Wasp uh, pre-built deck soon in a game. I'm not sure which uh, villain will I choose for that game, but thanks for watching this uh, first look at all of the cards that come in the Wasp Hero Pack. Thanks for watching and until next time.